Hi, this is Jeff Challen. I want to give you a little bit of an overview of exactly what's going on um, and how the client-server interaction happens in MP4. So just let me preface this screencast by saying that this is completely optional information. Um, you do not need to understand how this works to complete the MP and the testing suite doesn't test this behavior or rely on it at all. But this is sort of what's fun about the MP is getting this web front end to work, I think. Um, and so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how everything actually works. So uh, let me start off by grabbing a file here to play with. Um, so I'm gonna load up the CS125 logo. And now let's say I'm, I wanna shift it up. So you can see I'm running the solution set and the up and down shifts work as they're supposed to. But what is actually happening every time I click on one of these buttons? So let me walk you through what happens. So the first thing we have to understand is how does the browser react to this particular click? So this click is, so now I'm showing you the HTML. Let me see if I can increase the font size here. Um, well, it's probably fine. So this is now the HTML that's rendering this page. And I'm going to find the shift down tag. So this is the markup that is rendering this particular button, the shift down button. So you can see um, that this button has, if you've seen HTML before, this button, uh, I declare a button which um, has something, tells the page something about what this element is going to do. And then I give it a bunch of different properties. Um, and one of them, you can see the title here, shift down. That's what's used when I hover over the button as a tooltip. So to give you some sense of how to use this particular um, component, I provided these tooltips. So that's what's shown there. So the first thing is this button generates a click event. And now what happens is that we go over and look at the JavaScript that's running on the page. So a big part, I should say, you know, an enormous part of the modern internet is the fact that every web page that you use is actually a computer program. Um, it's actually running code on your browser, and that code is actually doing quite a bit. Um, that code is interacting with servers, that code is handling your inputs, that code is changing the appearance of the page in a variety of different ways. That's the modern web experience. So when you use something like Gmail or you use something like Spotify, um, there is a server that's involved, some machine in somebody's you know, data center, um, in some you know, warehouse somewhere in, in this country probably, um, but there is also code that is being sent to your browser and is run in the browser itself. And that code is typically written in a language called JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is not something that we teach in this class, so again, it's not something that you need to understand, um, but it's a really interesting and fun language, in my opinion, primarily because it allows you to write these kind of interactive web applications. It actually allows you to write code that runs in somebody else's browser. So I'm going to skip some of the details here, um, but essentially what happens is when that button is clicked, there is some JavaScript that runs um, on the page. And that JavaScript is this function called transform canvas. So every uh, transform function that you click on in the UI calls this one function called transform canvas. And the function gets called with two parameters. One is the name of the transform to perform. So in this case, this is going to try to do a shift down. Um, and let me actually show you that happening. So one of the cool things you can do with Chrome and other browsers is you can open up a debugging dialog. Um, and just like system.out.println in Java, JavaScript has a print function. Um, and it's called console.log. So this logs some information to the console. Normally, you can't see the console when you are using a web page. The console is not visible to the user normally. But when I open up the debugging display, I can choose to see uh, the functions that are being run, I can choose to see the console output. And what I've done to kind of make this make a little bit more sense, and actually also for my own debugging, was I've added some logging messages that get printed every time a particular function is run. So let's watch what happens. Let me clear the console first because there's some prior output. So now I've got a blank console, and now let's click shift down. 
Okay, so you'll see the first thing that happens, like I said, is this line of code runs. This is logging the fact that transform canvas is running, and it's also logging the name of the transform that was initiated. And in this case, the transform was a downshift or shift down. So what happens here? Um, and again, I'm going to gloss over some of the details. You're welcome to read this code more carefully and ask questions about it on the forum. The first thing I do is I grab all the data from the canvas. So this element right here that's visible um, on the page is an element that's called an HTML5 canvas. It's a drawing object, and I can essentially do arbitrary drawing operations on it. I can draw lines, I can draw circles, I can set pixels, I can move things from place to place. Um, it's sort of like the Zen graphics library that we had to use in a couple, uh, couple libraries ago, um, and it has all of those same features. So I grab the information from the console. So what I'm getting here is I'm actually getting, sorry, I grab the information from the canvas. So what I'm getting is I'm actually getting all of the raw bytes that are on the canvas, all the raw pixels as bytes. So I get a long array of bytes. Each byte represents some amount of information about a pixel on the display. And the way that, um, the, way that the canvas gives me this information is I start at the top left which is position zero, zero. I go to the right all the way for one row, and then I loop back to the left, and I go one row, one row, one row, one row. So left to right, top to bottom. Keep in mind that the Canvas um, orientation is a little bit weird in the sense that if you're used to working with mathematical functions, you're used to the origin being down here. This is zero, zero. On a Canvas, the origin is up here. This is zero, zero. The Y values go up as you go down, the x values go up as you go to the right. And so shifting the image down actually corresponds to increasing the y values for all of those pixels, which is a little odd. You know, again, you might be used to thinking of a downshift as reducing the y values. In this case, a downshift is increasing the y values. So that's something that you have to think about as you write your own transform functions. Okay, so I've got the contents of the canvas. Now, here's the point where I actually am going to send this data to the server. So a lot of modern web applications, things like, again, Gmail and Spotify, don't ask the server for an entirely new page. Instead, what they do is they communicate with the server by sending it data and receiving some information back. So for example, Gmail might ask the server, do I have any new mail? And if the server responds yes, it'll send the some information about the new mail that should be put on the page back to the web page. And the web page will update its UI to express the fact that that mail is there. So if you've ever watched Gmail when new mail comes in, the page doesn't refresh. The page doesn't reload itself. All that happens is suddenly in my inbox, there's a new message. Um, so that's what I'm going to kind of do here. I'm going to send, so this is a, a function called HTTP post. This allows me to send data to the server. And the data I'm sending is information about the pixels on the display, because that's the information that your code needs in order to transform them appropriately. So I'm actually sending, sorry, I'm sending two pieces of data. The first thing I'm sending is what transformation I want to perform. And the second piece of information I'm sending is what are the contents of the current image buffer that should be transformed. So now let's jump over and look at the server-side code. So now I'm going to open up server.java. Um, and now what happens is my web server, again, and this is I'm, I'm trying to make this a high-level overview, my web server has been set up to route this type of request. So again, remember I made a post request. So this says any post request gets sent to this function called wrap image transform. So I come up here. And there are comments in here to help you understand what's going on. But essentially, there's some code in here that's required to take this single dimensional array of pixels and convert it into a two dimensional array that you can then um, operate on. Now there's this huge, horrible case statement. And what this is doing is just making sure that the right transform function gets called. So remember when I showed you in the console that the shift up transform was requested. So what that means is that I'm going to hit this statement in my switch statement. And I'm going to call uh, your function transform.shift up. 
Um, I use this default position shift that's defined in your function, which you're welcome to change. And your function is, is um, expected to return an array, a two-dimensional array of shifted pixels. All right, so now when I get to the bottom, so remember at the top, I had to take this one-dimensional array and unflatten it. So I had to convert it into a two-dimensional array. You might, as you might suspect, at the bottom, what I'm going to do is re-flatten the array before I send it back to the, to the client. So I take that array, which is two-dimensional, and I convert it back into a one-dimensional array uh, that the client is expecting. And then what I do is I actually send a response. So the client sent me information. It said, here's some structured data about the image, uh, about the pixels on the screen, and I want you to shift them down. Now what I'm doing is I'm sending a reply back to the client saying, hey, here's the new data. Uh, the transformation that you requested has been performed. And what happens now is I'm inside this block of code. So now I have um, what's called transform contents, which is the reply from the server. I take, I pull the data out of it, I write it back to this canvas object that I'm using, and then I merge the foreground and the background canvas. This is something that we do to allow you to, um, to use these background images. So that's what makes this possible, for example. Um, so that's it. Um, so just to recap, every time I perform one of these transformations, the button click triggers JavaScript code that runs on the client inside your browser. So if you use our solution set, this runs in your browser, not on the server. That code takes the information from the display, uh, serializes it, sends a message to the server that contains the contents of the current display. The server then runs some code to transform the pixels appropriately, creates a response that it then sends back to the client. The client then redraws that information on the screen. Now, one thing you might notice is that there's some lag. And I just want to uh, quickly point out, um, in many ways, this is an example of how to build a modern web application. But in one really important way, it is not, which is that um, image data, as you were going to find out in lab this week, is highly compressible. Um, so I can take an image and using compression um, schemes like JPEG or PNG, which until now you only knew as file extensions, but these are actually compression techniques that allow me to reduce the size of images, I can greatly reduce the size of an image. The data that I'm sending to the server here is uncompressed data. So I'm taking the original image, which was probably compressed quite effectively, I'm uncompressing it, and then I'm sending the uncompressed data to the server. So if I was actually building this for real, I would never send uncompressed data to the server because the uncompressed data is much, much bigger. And a little bit of the lag that you're seeing here um, is not your transformation function. Those are extremely fast. So when I ran the solution set, you know, you can do 25 transforms in like four milliseconds. So that is not what's causing the lag. What's causing the lag here is simply that I have to have to send a pretty big chunk of information to the server every time because I'm sending uncompressed data. So the right way to do this would be to send compressed data to the server, let the server decompress it, perform the transform, recompress it, and send it back to the client. Um, but we've done it this way just to make things a little bit simpler uh, for you. So that's a high-level overview of how this works. Again, if you have questions about it, uh, feel free to read the JavaScript code that we provided. I've tried to um, provide a sort of an unusual number of comments in the JavaScript code to make it a little bit more intelligible. Um, you're also welcome to post on the forum.